study this reaction at AS and it's the depletion of ozone. So we've got O3 plus O making two O2 molecules. And again, determined experimentally, rate equals K, the concentration of a chlorine radical. Remember, Cl dot is a chlorine radical and multiplied by the concentration of O3. So these are both order one. So that means that the rate determinant step contains one chlorine radical reacting with one ozone molecule. So what is involved in the rest of the rate determinant step and in the green other step? If you remember from your mechanisms from AS, we've got a radical reacting with a stable molecule. So this is going to be a propagation reaction and therefore we need to form a different radical and a different stable molecule. So we're going to make the ClO radical and an O2 molecule. You can see we've made one of the O2s that we need. Remember we need two. So we haven't got this ClO radical in the overall equation, so we need to get rid of that. So we're going to bring it into this step here, ClO radical. So they will cancel, may as well cancel them now, just to see that um, that's going to happen. So what else do we need? Well, we've got no oxygen atoms yet, so we better bring that in now as a reactant in the green step. So what will that produce? Well, that's going to produce, we need another O2 molecule. We've only got one. So if we make an O2 molecule, that's going to give us those two added together. So that's working. And the only other thing we need to do is we need rid of this chlorine radical. Well, if you look, we've got a radical and a stable, a stable molecule over here. So if we make a new radical, and it's obviously a chlorine radical that's going to be left over, then... That will cancel with that, and we have made the equation that we need. O3 plus O makes two O2s. Have we satisfied the rules? Yes, we have. These two add up to make the net equation, and the rate determinant step is consistent with the rate equation, so it's a valid mechanism. You'll also notice, and they sometimes ask this, suggest the role of the chlorine radical. Well, you can see that it's used in the first step, the rate determinant step, but it's regenerated in the green step, the other step, and so it's effectively not being used up in the process, and so it's acting as a catalyst. And remember, this chlorine radical then go on and catalyze the breakdown of even more ozone molecules, and that's the problem. Another key word that you could bring in is the fact that the ClO radical is what we call an intermediate, and that's because it's, it's formed in the first step, and then it sort of gets used up in the second step. So it's a kind of... Um, in between type of product and we would refer to that as something known as an intermediate. We'll just finish with this. Final reminder for a mechanism to be valid it must satisfy this first point. The rate determinant step must be consistent with the rate equation. So that's the bit about the reactants in the rate determinant step must um, comply with what the rate equation is saying. So if you've got rate equals k, a to the power 2, b to the power 1, that means there'd be two molecules of a reacting with one molecule of b in the rate determinant step. 2, the sum of the individual steps must make the overall equation when you add them together. And then just finally, as long as your mechanism works, so you satisfy these two equations, you will get the marks. It says that on all the mark schemes that I've ever seen. So don't worry if yours isn't the actual mechanism. As long as it works, you'll get the marks.